name is Julie Caulfield and I'm a makeup artist working in TV and film. Today I'm going to do a tutorial for you to show you how to do bruises, cuts um, and a general beaten up look. So everything I'm using today is all going to be really from um, your joke shops. You don't have to use a very expensive makeup. You don't have to go to the expensive makeup shops. So I'm going to do it as budget friendly as I possibly can. So the best thing for bruises um, and cuts and everything are these little bruise wheels. So this one is from Meron and I think I got it in uh, St. Stephen's Green in Dublin. So when you're doing bruises, they always have lots of different colours in them. Uh, the best one to do with this is to use your fingers to work with it as it's a cream base. The heat from your skin is going to make the product much easier to work with. So I'm going to start off with a dark colour. And we're just going to go here around the eye. So when you look at a picture of a bruise or anything, they always have the different colours. They never have a perfect uniform shape. And the cream, cream colours can be quite strong as well. So make sure you layer them quite lightly. And this one here, I'm going to start in with some other colours. So I'm going to go for some of the brighter red. Make it look more angry. And I'm going to use some of the yellows as well. So as you do this, you can decide where uh, on your victim that they've um, received their injuries or where they might have their, their marks and their bruises. So we're definitely going to do a black eye. So if you close your eye for me. So always be very gentle, especially when you're working around the eyes, you don't want to poke someone. Um, so here we're going to do lots of bruising on the eye. And go with quite a strong colour here. And you're always going to blend out your edges because when you see bruising on anyone, it always disappears into the skin. I'm going to put more onto the eyelid as well. I'm going in with the darker colour now. So a good trick when you're using the bruise wheels is to use a different finger for each colour. So you always keep a clean finger as well so you can blend easily. And as you work on one bit you might decide that you want to make another bit that bit stronger or lighter. So I'm going to go in with the black here. Again just tiny little bits. Underneath the eye needs to be a bit darker too. And always bring it right into the very inside corner here because that makes your injury look that bit much angrier, more angry. I'm just going to know. So I'm going to just move the chair in a tiny bit <laughs> and start to see a little better. So she doesn't look great now anyway. But yeah, we're only getting started. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to do a black eye on the other side as well. Again, in with your red first. If you find it hard to get into uh, different areas on the face, you can always get a brush. Sometimes fingers are... Just that little bit too big to get in there. It doesn't matter what sort of brush it is, as long as it's clean. And again, you're not poking their eyes. So you can darken up certain points. So I'm going to go in with this little darker one here again. Just open your eyes for me. Start to see she's um, starting to, to take shape. One thing that makes the black eyes look much angrier as well, as well as if you get a little small brush and your red colour. And you look right up for me. You can go just in there. 
right underneath the eye and then you blend it with your finger again making sure you're being really gentle because you are working around the eyes Obviously making sure you have plenty of baby wipes on hand to get all of this off afterwards as well. So I'm going to do a good strong bruise here as if she's got uh, a good punch in the cheek. Let's start with our much darker colour. I'm going to bring in our yellow. Now it's that real kind of stippled, mottly effect. You want lots and lots of colours into this. I'm going to bring in some green. And all bruises have different ages as well. So a bruise will look completely different today than it does tomorrow or it did yesterday. So as they age, then the colours change as well. And making sure that all your edges are disappearing. I'm going to go in with some more red. I'm going to darken up here as well. So there's lots of things you can do <clears throat> with wax and with bits of blood and things like that to make the injuries look much more angry. So this one is one of my favourite tools for uh, cuts and grazes and scars. It's a stipple sponge, but you don't have to buy the exact proper ones. You can always get like your little kitchen sponge that um, you can find at any supermarket or anywhere like that has the same kind of wiry effect so you'll still be able to get that grazed effect that you'd have otherwise so with the blood it doesn't really matter what type you're going to go for i'm just going to go for one out of my kit uh, a lot of these they don't wash out of clothes or anything like that so make sure whatever you're wearing and um, you don't mind if you get little bits on it or else you know use a towel or something like that so with the grazed sponges you do literally graze the skin you turn slightly there so it makes it look much more angry and these will all dry as well and if you want it more like a cut you can stipple into one area and build up your color So another little bit then onto your hand or onto a little plate or whatever it is. Let's make her look like she has a bloody nose. So get a cotton bud. One other thing I'm going to do here, you can get wound fillers, again in all the joke shops. Uh, Cryolan is a great brand, even in the joke shops they do all the proper uh, wounds and the fillers and things like that. So also, you could also get away with any sort of raspberry jam, blackberry jam, anything like that from the kitchen. It'll do the same job. Uh, this is just the, the one that I would usually use. So... <clears throat> It's good to make it look like there's a proper cut there. So again, you just get your cotton bud and put whatever sort of shape you like. <clears throat> also, if you want to make really, really good scabs, you can use cornflakes um, and some spirit gum. So you get your spirit gum again from the joke shop. 
You put spirit gum onto the area that you want to create the scab. You crush up your cornflakes, stick them to it, and then get a little brush and your same color is from your bruise wheel and uh, you can make it look like they're proper uh, sores. And you can do them then any size at all. You can do cuts all over the place if you want. That's what makes you happy. So just to finish this one off then, we're just gonna put the little trickle of blood. So if you turn your face this way, please. I'm just gonna let that run. The only way to have an actual run of blood is to let it drip. So if it's gonna go anywhere, I'll stop it. Um, and it's very tickly for her for the moment. Um, but uh, I'll stop it now in a second. There we go. So we're starting to get there now, I think, with the look. <clears throat> so a very quick thing I'm gonna do as well. So I'm gonna use a wax to make some wounds. So this is a Ben Nye uh, nose and scar wax, but you can get any kind of brand. Again, Kryolan do one, you'll buy them in all your joke shops. So you're gonna take out a small piece, maybe about the size of a pea. This sort of size. And you can use a knife or anything. So you're going to roll it into a ball. And then you're going to press it on to wherever. So if you wanted to do just boils or lumps in the skin, you can just press this onto the skin and then you blend it out. So for this, I'm going to give her just as if she has a small break in her nose. The wax gets very sticky also, so you need to work quite quickly with it. And the best way to get around this is if you have a metal tool, so again a knife or something like that, um, a little bowl, cold water, and then you use your spatula. So if you try to blend this with your fingers, it's going to get completely stuck, it's going to come back off, it's going to uh, just go everywhere. So what you want to do is just stick down your edges. And then the little bits then you can rub into the skin. So you can use this same wax if you want to make big cuts or uh, any real, any injuries really. You do the exact same technique. If you close your eye for me. I'll just get in here and closer. And you want to smooth that over. So because I'm used to working with this <clears throat> I'm able to do it with my fingers, but if you're having trouble making it into a smoother area, you can get a little bit of moisturizer or some baby oil or something like that and just rub it over then. And so from there, you can see it just looks like a bump. It's not the same color as your skin or anything like that. We're going to fix all that. So I'm going to put a little slit straight into the wax. And when you're doing your slits, you need to do it quite quickly as well because the wax is warming on the skin and it could lift off. Again, I'm going to get a little skinny brush. I'm going to just put some colour in here. I'm going to colour around. And I'm going to use our fingers again to colour the wax. So once you have your colour and your bruising done then, you can get your wound filler or your jam or whatever it is you're using. Take a little piece onto a cotton bud. I'm going to get that into the slit you've just made. So lots of these take, take a bit of practice to get them right, but they look really good and they're all done and they're lots of fun as well. So we're going to put more blood on. Oh, you have a bit of blood, don't you? Yeah, love the blood. So 
So I don't mind that this is messy, it's Halloween and it's going to be fun. So you can see she has her wax piece here. You could do another cut maybe up here. So I'm going to do that for you now. I'm going to take a bigger piece this time. I'm going to roll it into more of a sausage sort of shape instead of a, a little circle or a little round. I'm going to go here. So make sure you don't get this stuck in hair or anything. It doesn't really come out very well. Whoever you're doing this on might not be too happy. So again, you're going to get your metal tool your cold water. I'm going to stick down your edges. You need to use a good bit of pressure as well. You want this completely flat so you don't have the lines in it. Also you want it to stay on as well. So. <clears throat> So once you have your wax all smoothed out, you can see your area that you'll do the cut. So I'm going to just wet my spatula again because I don't want it to get stuck. <clears throat> And pull the edges back a little bit, make it look like it's a much more open sort of wound. And then you're going to colour. So to cut this size, you'd always have lots of inflammation around the outside. Um, you'd have, again, your different colours of bruising. It depends how old the wound is as to uh, what colours you'll go for. But for me, we're going to go for like it's fresh today. So again, just getting my brush and get into the sides here. I'm going to blend out your colour as well. It doesn't just stop all of a sudden. I'm going to get your wound filler or your jam. I'm just going to go right into the incision that you've made. And so you can do your cuts in any shape with this, with the wax. So that's your uh, cuts and bruises look. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.